Oh, hi, Jean. Hi, hi Eileen. Hi. How are you? Hi. Yeah, this, is, this is so surreal. Everybody is like doing this from home and I'm doing interviews from home and stuff like that. that yeah. Like the world has just changed overnight, you know, yeah. in the last two weeks. It's a bit crazy, but I hope yeah. you guys have been doing okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty good, pretty good. But I just said, yeah, it's raining over there at your place, huh? Yeah, you know how difficult it is to find a, like a quiet spot to do the interview. <laughs> I think I jumped from outside my house to my living room to my room and finally I ended up here, which is, uh, if everybody wants to know, this is my living room, uh, my TV room, sorry. So this is where we watch TV as a family. Uh, and yeah, okay, enough about my home. Lah. <laughs> you're, you're practically a brave the rain to do this. Like. Yeah. You know, just now, was so, this is so, how, so, how so, stupid so it was. We, uh, we, we can't call you a fair weather friend, right? No, no, not fair weather. I'm just like, this is called, <laughs> just, this is lousy just weather. This horrible weather friend. So just now, I was sitting outside and then literally the rain was like smacking against my face. I was going, why am I doing this to myself? Why? Why? My fun for a spot. Yeah. Okay, Eugene. Yeah. Come yes. on, we... Uh, we are we are talking uh, for three year music collective. Uh, so mm-hmm. for straight the gist of it, the uh, I mean the the, the, the main um, the main thing we always talk about is mental illness, yeah, yeah. mental wellness, and uh, how to create awareness, uh, right, yeah. and acceptance of this thing. All right, come, let's go straight into your story. You suffered from a mental breakdown some years back, right? Can you talk yes. to us about it? What led to it? Uh, what happened? Uh, okay, so. Wow, just straight off the bat, uh, let's go right into this fellow's deficiencies. Okay, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, this was... Oh, by the way, that is one of the ways that we cope sometimes uh, with, with the story of us having uh, emotional problems or mental illnesses is that we, really, we end up joking about it. So yeah. if you see someone joking about mental illness a lot, uh, I tell you, maybe 50, at least 50% of the time, that person does have uh, uh, certain difficulties emotionally inside. So just let, let our viewers know about that too, you know. Uh, this was, I think, more than 10 years ago, at least when I was uh, in the US. So I was studying in the US. Uh, right. And at that time, you know, I had no idea about all these things. There was I had really no conception of what depression really was, anxiety, right. so on and so forth. This is not something that we grow up with. Neither is it something that is taught to us, you know, in school. Wow. Even at that time, after uh, it was after army, right? Mm-hmm. For for us guys, right? Yeah. We were what twenty one at least. At twenty one yeah. years old, Singaporean males have no idea, pretty much, about what the different kinds of mental illnesses are. Uh, yeah. and that they actually happen to people unless okay unless they had it in their family yeah if well, not then mm-hmm. nobody you wouldn't know okay mm-hmm. and that was the general the general uh, education mm-hmm. or at least and also it was not something that was talked about very much during that time right no yeah I think the awareness yeah. was not even there yeah there was zero awareness at that point in time mm-hmm. so yeah as when I went to when I went to America to study I left Singapore left my support group and everything into a new place with a whole bunch of the disorders that I didn't know that I had you know mm-hmm. uh, I've always wondered why when I was a kid I, I wasn't really well understood and and I didn't really make fast friends and things like that and why I couldn't hold conversations properly because my mind in my mind it seemed like I was having perfect conversations right but mm-hmm. according to people you know I'm jumping from topic A to topic D to topic C to Z mm-hmm. and things like that so part of it was I had ADHD you know right. not the hyperactive kind but the, the mentally overactive kind right mm-hmm. and along with that was anxiety and along with that was also depression because the depression came from um, the lack of uh, 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 affirmative feedback from other human beings basically right so there was loneliness and things like that so i with all this i brought with me Mm. to america (laughs) alone yeah Uh, alone wasn't and and it wasn't easy and the thing is but i didn't know it was this was the case so when i was in america uh doing my studies there um they manifested uh, on a on a higher level uh, yeah. purely because I was alone a lot of the time. Right. Uh, you know, you live on your own a lot of the mm-hmm. time. You do things for yourself, right? ADHD, mm-hmm. people, ADHD people have very, very bad executive function. Okay. So, living on your own means that you need to be able to stay on task and on focus to do your normal functional things in life. 
right mm -hmm. and with the adhd with the anxiety the really really bad uh, clinical depression right mm -hmm. totally cease to function uh, right for almost yeah. you know uh, for for at least seven years when I was there, you know, uh, it was very very bad, um, mm. and I had no idea I was, there was anything wrong with me. Mm. Was know? there like was there like external stress that uh, maybe work? Or there was there was a yeah. there was a bunch of, I mean, it was really external stress to tell you the truth. Mm. The stress came from expectations that I set of myself, but I couldn't function properly enough to to oh, to okay. meet those expectations, right? And those expectations are not in any way shape or form difficult to achieve right you know Very regular it's just, like, it's just yeah. regular stuff just stay on task you know yeah. uh, and and just get things done yeah. right it, i'm not saying like spend 20 hours a day uh, on projects for the next seven years no that, of course that that will give you a lot of stress i was going through regular university you know kind of kind of things right okay. mm -hmm. so what happened um, was that towards the end of my stay there uh before I moved cities, um, I had an episode where I did try to kill myself uh, with a whole bunch of aspirin. Uh, and, the, and the thing is, I don't know whether to, to say that TV shows are good or bad. <laughs> so I learned it from a TV show, you know, they said it was the most painless way to die. Okay. Your heart just stops, basically. Uh -huh. And I was thinking to myself, actually, yeah. That would have been a perfect way to do it because you know I, I don't have anybody i i don't feel i mean at that time you know i don't feel like i belong in this world um at that time i felt that uh there was very very little meaning to to what i was going through in life in general you know because i can swing one moment from being completely uh, uh motivated to do something to five minutes later, losing their motivation, getting anxious about it, being depressed about it, sleeping for 24 hours, waking up the next day. <laughs> the, the life was just uh, one big hellhole of, of emotional yeah. turmoil just jumping back and forth. Yeah. Did you did you have friends during that time? Yes. I mean, people you were close with? Yes, who, uh, I did. Who, who perhaps suspected that something might have been wrong? But we, was that uh, the point? There was, there was a, there was a turning point. But I mean, to answer Ivan's question, yes. But we are very good at hiding it. Okay, right. We are very good at hiding it, not because we don't want help, but purely because we are running away from the problem just as much as everybody else is. <laughs> you know, right. we run away from the problem also. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as we want other people to have awareness of it, <laughs> we ourselves are trying very hard not to keep it in our awareness either, okay, you yeah. know, a lot of the time. So by hiding it, other people didn't really notice it. But uh, the turning point was literally when I woke up one morning and I realized that for, the entire, for an entire two months, uh, I was doing nothing but sleeping. I don't know how I did it. It was just hypersomnia and insomnia at the same time, right? So non-stop two months of sleeping and then suddenly the next three days I can't sleep. And then that's when I decided to take the aspirin. Uh, and after that, then that's when I started getting help. Uh, social services. Uh, I mean, it's hard to hide the fact that you took an entire bottle of aspirin. It's not something you can like, uh, yeah. yeah, I was having a really bad headache. So that's why I took 30 aspirin. You know that kind of thing? No, it doesn't work that way. So, uh, yeah. And so social services uh, got in. Uh, to, to my case and then move forward from there. But what was interesting was that um, when I did get diagnosed and when uh, I started being more open about it, right? Um, to tell you the truth, the first people that who were accepting and who were, uh, who reached out, you know, uh, gentle hands and understanding words and, you know, and things like that were Americans first. Because this is something that they they live with normally, you know. They are very very open about their emotions. They're very very open about telling people straight up how they feel about you, you know, whether they like you or not, you know, whether they like the situation or not. So for them, mental illness is, I wouldn't say they they, they incorporate it into their lives, but they are very aware of it, and they are aware of it to the point that they understand that is the illness. 
Right. Uh, and it's not something that you you uh, throw put one side lah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I was so much closer to Americans then than I was to Singaporeans. Okay. Uh, It was many years ago, right? It was many, many years ago, right? And the Singaporean community still didn't could didn't figure it out. And I tell you the truth, you know, even if I as I say that, it's not their fault. Yeah. <laughs> a, you know, yeah. they don't know any better. <laughs> None of us know any better. <laughs> you know, so I cannot say that Americans are better or Singaporeans are worse. You know, at that mm. point in time, it was just because one culture had an awareness and had a had an openness towards it, and one culture did it. And it wasn't right. the, the individual's fault at mm-hmm. the end of the day. So I actually really had good treatment. And even though it wasn't like premium psychiatry or premium psychologists, which they actually have, uh, they have tiers, yeah. you know, right? right? Yeah. Uh, but I, I was just a simple <clears throat> university uh, counselor and and things like that, who was already good enough, you know, sent me to the university hospital to get medication. And uh, I moved on from there. You see, but the problem was that it was misdiagnosed, so I couldn't really get rid of it because mm-hmm. nobody detected the ADHD at that right. time. Mm-hmm. They only detected the anxiety and mm-hmm. the, uh, the depression. depression. But the root cause of it, actually, now now that I've uh, gone for more counseling and psychiatry, is. The ADHD was the root cause of everything. That's what stemmed the entire domino, you know, thing yeah, that went down. Yeah, yeah. that was what triggered it. Yeah, that was what basically just triggered everything else, lah. Yeah. So your ADHD diagnosis was actually done very recent. Yeah, recent. Yeah. Very wow. recent. Okay. And uh, the the counselor was telling me, I, I have no idea how you survived with ADHD all the way into your 30s you know and I'm not afraid to say I'm 30, I'm 38 this year right so still I still can't be the dust <laughs> yeah but I mean but to her like you get diagnosed with ADHD because now it's so much better so much uh, more accurate diagnosis right uh, they can detect it when you're a kid mm. but for us who fell under the radar back then when this wasn't even a thing Uh, a lot of us came into our current state uh, with this condition, and uh, the, the psychologists and psychiatrists are saying that it's a wonder how you survived uh, all these years. So, also, uh, I mean, by the grace of the, the God or the universe or whatever you guys believe in, you know, I think that and uh, a, a belief in myself and strength, uh, I guess that's one, a few of the things that helped me through. You know, mental strength, lah. Uh, hopefully, you know, and that carries me through to to other things also. Yeah. Mm. Wow, uh, it's been quite a long journey actually for you. Mm. But I mean, it's there's a lot of the good things that came out of it, right? Mm. Uh, I'm more open to my family now. Mm-hmm. Cause, yes, uh, yeah, I because back then, you don't say these kind of things. Yeah. It doesn't even come out of your mouth, okay? Your mouth, you think mental illness, your mouth says no. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. Let's not even go near there with a 10-foot pole, okay? Yeah. But because of what happened when I was in America, when I saw everyone just being so open about it, I decided, you know what, what, what's, what, what am I going to lose at the end of the day? Am I just going to have another argument with, mm-hmm. with my family members? Never mind, you know, just get it out there. So I decided, okay, you know what, let's, let's just do it. I... Just became a little bit more open, at least with the, the parents. Mm. Uh, it wasn't easy. Mm. I think still to this day, they still can't really come to terms with with, with it. Uh, right. But it will take time. You know, it takes time. But uh, at the end of the day, at least I got it got it out there, and okay. now they know. And the right. most important thing is now they know, and right. because they know, we can move forward. Yeah, yeah. If they didn't. Yeah, we can't right. move forward. Really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what inspired this uh, song? The writing of this song. Okay, so I think this was uh, was written by Yu Quan, um, who goes by another name actually, by a, a stage name. Uh, okay. But for some reason, he really doesn't want us to say it. So okay, let's just leave it at that, right? Okay. Uh, really, really good songwriter, and he himself um, is an advocate for uh, a lot of different mental issues and things like that. 
uh, helping out for uh, people with mental issues. And he himself has gone through a few, uh, things like that in the past. And this song is literally about ang- anxious people <laughs> <laughs> who end up becoming depressed. To tell you the truth, the trajectory of it, you know, yeah. uh, where we cannot hold a space inside, literally. Mm-hmm. The space inside is just roiling. It's it's messy. It's 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 full of daggers, you know, and things like that. It just goes everywhere. It pulls you one side. It pulls you one side. But the only problem is that, you know, this song is is literally crying out for help. It's asking us to, can you please, can 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 I find that me that's inside, hold it as a safe <coughs> space for me to be who I am, you know. Uh, in my mind and in my emotions, and that that was what really uh, uh, drew me to to the song because it really echoed a lot of what I went through, um, and so going through the process of the song was fun. As you know, we we are literally very good at joking about what we go through. Right. Not only are we good at joking about it, we are good at uh, 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 literally. For some reason, the depressed people are actually very funny people. True. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say that I'm very funny. You know, <laughs> it's just that we tend to want to be as funny as we possibly can, right? Yeah. So keeping the the recording session light, you know, uh, yeah. being silly during the recording session and things like that, it was a really enjoyable experience for me, really. Uh, and in contrast to the content of the words of the song, you know, right. but uh, I think. Uh, the, the meaning and the feeling got through, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, I'm I'm very very happy that that space inside uh, got produced and is now out there for people to listen to, you know. Mm-hmm. And we I really hope that more people go to 3M's uh, uh, Spotify and YouTube and things like that, and really go and check out all these songs. Not to go and immerse yourself into mental illness, right? Yeah. But um, just be aware that you know all these songs are written by people who have had problems. And they're talking about these problems in 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 music form, and just listen and maybe be aware. And okay, you know what? All that aside, let's go and enjoy the music because it's really good stuff. You know, there's a metal song there. There's a bunch. Wow, there's, there's different genres and things like that. I was like, my mind blown. Yeah, I was like thinking, wow, all these genres put together, and then space inside is your nice electro. Easy going, synthy with uh, with a nice hook and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. Go and enjoy the music first and foremost, mm-hmm. and then if you are open and willing, uh, find out more about what what the songs mean oh. to us, mm-hmm. and then what it could possibly mean for you. You know, so that's uh, hopefully the message that that I can send out to to viewers out there. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, so when you were actually doing the recording session, um, you know the meaning behind the song. You know the meaning in the lyrics. So when you were recording, what actually went through your mind? Although you did say yeah, you were having fun, but um, fun on one on one point. But was was it a struggle actually? Like because you want to the message to get out there as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, oh, the message okay. is, is a bit more serious, right? Than the, yeah, I mean, yeah. in a sense, I, you, you, you had to reconcile the fun and yeah. the, uh, the, so the gravity of the message. Actually. Yeah. I yeah. remember when Edric first approached me to do this. Uh, Edric and I are partners in Grid, <clears throat> uh, Grid Private Limited, so which is the studio you guys did the recordings in and the production. Yeah. He said two words, because he, as you know, Edric doesn't really talk much. Right. I, I love him though. He's, oh. he's very concise. And he says only what yeah. he needs to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it went along the lines of, "Hey, do you want to sing a song for 3 a.m. free?" <laughs> right? <laughs> That's usually how the conversation starts, right? right. <laughs> and then I was like, "3 a.m. Uh, why free? It's a good cause <laughs> for mental illness." I didn't really see the lyrics until the day itself, right? <laughs> So the process of it was like this. It happened in a split second. I sat there, they sent me the lyrics, I put it on the stand, the music played, and I started singing it for the first time. And then the lyrics started. 
to really spoke to you in term, to enter my psyche at that point mm-hmm. while I was doing the recording. So that was as real as you could possibly get. Yeah. Um, literally in situ as I was recording, I was internalizing the the fact that the lyrics was hit so close to home. Yeah, and you the know? experience the experience of course was useful. Yes, yeah, yeah. it was. You know, it literally is cathartic. You know, mm, that's yeah. what art does for for most of us. Really, mm-hmm. is to is that catharsis where we let let out all these things mm. through watching it happen or listening to it happen, right? Mm. Or reading it. So as I was reading and I was recording, that connection happened. And uh, Eileen was saying whether it was difficult. It was difficult in so far as that I had to stop myself from being overly jokey. Mm. Because right. that's usually the go-to reaction for all of us. Yeah. yeah. The go-to reaction for a lot of us is we straight we start being joking about. It. We joke about it. We we make it. We make light of it. You know, mm-hmm. in spite of ourselves, right? right. So my my problem, <coughs> my difficulty was to stop myself from being too much of that, and mm-hmm. get really into the creative and the emotional process of recording the song. You mm-hmm. know. So that that was a that was a struggle in that sense. I wasn't feeling. It didn't. It didn't bring me back to places that I didn't want to go because I'm not afraid to go there anymore. Yes. Mm. I'm actually literally not afraid to go there anymore. I can send my memories back to wherever, face it, and go. It happened. Come back here to present, and then move on with my life. You know that kind of thing. But that that took a long while to figure out, and mm. it took yeah, it took look took a long while to figure that that mm-hmm. process out. Basically. Mm. Okay. Yeah. For the then for the chorus, uh, do you think the chorus actually gives a sense of hope? Because it, it says, "So I hold my breath and see if you are still part of me. You hold space inside in my mind. Mm-hmm. In my mind, that do you that, think that's that's who we are calling out to? That's mm-hmm. the the you inside that that we all call out to. You know the the uh, how do I put this? In a not so metaphysical way, <laughs> uh, I believe uh, this is a belief and it's a faith that there is a higher purpose to what we all do, mm-hmm. right? And the who we are as a higher, right. higher self and as a higher purpose. Mm-hmm. And uh, our never-ending goal is to reach that purpose and that self, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I'm going to hold my breath and see. You know, if you're still a part of me, is that 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 ideal uh, space that I want to be in, that ideal uh, level that I want to reach? You know, in terms of me as emotionally, me as a physical person, me as a mental person, and me as a spiritual person as well, want to reach <coughs> that that state. You see, um, and yeah, it does give hope, but at the same time, it leaves that little window, and that's what I like about this song. Yes, it gives hope, but it's not false hope. Mm. This kind of hope, it says, it has a caveat. It says that mm. it's there, right? But you can't just hold your breath and see and pray mm. for it to come by, mm. you know. Yeah, but but if you want really want to get in touch with it, close your eyes and go and find it, right? And if you find it, reach out for it, okay? Mm. But you you can't stay within your shell and expect to move forward with life, lah. You know, and that would be the biggest thing for all of us is to just really break through that shell and mm-hmm. find that self, find that purpose, find that, um, find that that overarching story, overarching meaning to your life, and then just run for it. You know, as much as you mm-hmm. possibly can. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's a it, it's as much as it as we try to uh, appeal for awareness outside, we also need to appeal for awareness uh, within. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. within is also fifty percent of the battle. Uh, yeah. For for all of us, so without and within at the same time, I think mm-hmm. it's a it's a two prong attack for mm-hmm. for for mental illness in general. I feel yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, oh, thanks for that. Uh, that mm-hmm. I think that will be a good message for 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 our mm-hmm. listeners too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And for you, I I, I gather that uh, when it comes to like uh, healing, when it comes to recovery, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You tend to you tend to. Um, and I get a sense that uh, for your openness is very important. Yes. Openness in, in talking about these things. Mm. It used to be openness outwardly, mm. right? But I think 
uh, it slowly become a balance between being open outwardly, but at the same time being open inwardly. Being, being honest, being honest to yourself. Being honest with right. yourself. I think I one of the biggest uh, disservices that I've ever that I've done to myself over the years was the, how much I. How much I, I lied to myself yeah. back then? Mm-hmm. Take a break. How much? Uh, mm. How much we? How much damage we do to ourselves just because? Uh, we just can't be honest. Yeah. 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 And we learn that from other people also. So. Yeah. Sorry. No. Uh, okay. Yeah. But this this was this is really important because, um, at least at least for in my my situation because, you know, if if I just had been a little bit more honest, or people were more accepting, things would have been very very different, you know. But as much as I want to look back and regret, I can't. Yeah. Uh, I shouldn't. Sorry, no, I can't. I do all the time. Sorry, <laughs> I do, but I I shouldn't. Right. So, the, my my struggle right now is moving forward without looking back anymore, as much as possible. I mean, aside from doing something like this, because this is good. Talking about this gives people perspective, right? But as as I go forward through my my own daily life, as much as possible, I try not to look back. Not because I'm trying to avoid it. But it sh- it shouldn't hold uh, uh, its spell on you anymore. And what should be important is the way you live now, and the way the way you conduct your life now. So now I try my best to be as honest as possible with yeah. myself. You know, to 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 sound a little bit crass, and really I trying to push all the bullshit away. You know, all the running away from myself and that expectation within also becomes an expectation without you know Mm -hmm. so it's not that I become less patient with people but now I see uh, uh, people I can see what running away is for what it is you know and I can call people out on it you know and that becomes Mm -hmm. like a superpower now (laughs) you know it becomes a superpower seriously because you can see people running away from themselves or their situations Mm -hmm. you are I have now I have the ability to actually call you out Right. Mm-hmm. on it without mm-hmm. fear yeah. yeah so that's one good thing that came out of it I guess yeah that was a, that was a, yeah something I do apologize for for the for almost breaking down but yeah it's yeah. okay it's okay yeah. no, it's, this, this is it's a part of our life it's a fact yeah. of our life so yeah, yeah. so with this uh, I think you have started few businesses relating to mental health as well maybe you would like to share with oh re- relating to mental health um i think it's uh okay wait uh, sorry uh no. businesses in general uh is basically to to expand uh my, the creative work that i do uh it's one of the best outlets i have for trying to recover right okay. so I think you know, one of the reasons why I survived and my psychologist agrees is that I found outlets somehow to uh, stem the tide, lah, so to speak, mm-hmm. of the inexorable in- mental tidal wave, right, that, that constantly goes through. Uh, so, my capella, obviously, uh, grid uh, that I do creative production work with. Uh, I have Tier 12 who, who does events. And it's also a creative like staging and performances mm. and stuff like that, right? So that's right. my musical side. But what's interesting that recently I decided to uh, teach active breathing and uh, breath work. Yeah. So and this really really does help. This is something that I've been practicing all my life. Uh, mm. In word, basically learning how to connect with yourself and be honest with yourself on a deeper level, just through the very act of breath you know and breath and mental exercises and things like that right and this really uh, uh, I still firmly and strongly believe in this that I decided with a, with another facilitator we decided to start a, a group called Breath Familiar 
uh, the Brett family. family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. The okay. Brett family, right? And uh, to to teach people how to do active yeah. breathing, to center yeah. themselves and get, get better, like, basically, with their lives and focus, motivation, emotions, and stuff like that. <laughs> Where can they well, find? Where can we find more information on this? Oh, episode? you definitely can go to uh, breath dot familiar, and how you spell familiar is F A M I L I A. L I A is the Latin yeah. for family. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So breath dot familiar. Yeah. And uh, me and my my partner, we do we do lessons and things like that for people. Uh, we are actually going to start free. Um, free sessions because of the this, this COVID period that we are going through right now. So mm-hmm. that will probably happen in two weeks when we did, we mm-hmm. figure out the logistics of where and how mm-hmm. we're going to do it. But yes, we want to spread this message mm-hmm. to, to everyone in our own way. There are many ways to go about, you know, uh, having mental wellness, but I think uh, we will provide one way. Other people will provide other ways. And mm-hmm. whoever you are out there, pick whatever is good for you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But it's all there. Now nowadays everything's out there for you, basically. This yeah. breath this breath thing sounds like fun. I already have a client I want to recommend you. Oh yeah. nice. All right. Yeah, yeah. Please, please do. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know Lee, right? Lee? Lee you, do you know Lee? Um the lyricist for Shine? Uh first song. Uh, no, I, I don't think I've met yeah. I met Lee before, unfortunately. Yeah, she, I wish she, I, I wish I had met worries. everybody. Yeah, she actually worries that her breath might stop and she might die. She, she's freezing now, we're talking about her. Uh, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and I feel that something that you're doing would be helpful for someone like her, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, it's yeah. actually helpful for everybody, even if you're not, you, right. even if you don't have a problem, right? No. Uh, the breath really helps to, to energize, it also helps to yeah. focus you mm-hmm. and things like that. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, please come and, 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 and join us. We're going to have free lessons to, to start and then... Uh, we hope you guys uh, come with us and join the family and, and go on us with this journey that we are going to, uh, you know, undertake. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so any last words? Keep, keep breathing. Aware. <laughs> keep breathing and be honest with yourself. Yes. Please be yeah. honest with yourself. 